Welcome to the game of Risk, everyone. I'm your host, Olive XC, a top player at this game. And today on Tutor Tuesday, we're reviewing a game from the man, myth, and legend himself, Vampire Chicken, playing some Europe Advanced Progressive Capitals. So let's turn off our camera and focus on the main man of this episode. And we can also see here some crazy blizzards. And as you guys see from the thumbnail, our man Vampire Chicken goes for the capital. And this is great because since he has this spot on the board, he has no risk of being card blocked. If this spot was blocked, someone could cap here or here. And Vampire Chicken could have a lot of trouble breaking out across the board and could get card blocked easily. And Vampire Chicken's first turn super obvious. He just smashes and he goes back. He's a Giga Chad. He knows what he's doing. He's ready to win. Now we don't see anyone else on this board right now. I'm assuming Orange is uh, going for the Orient. White's obviously going for the center. Yellow, I think, botted. Red has a bunch of stuff here, so I'm guessing they're going for France, maybe? Someone's probably going for Noob Corner. And there's probably one other person, like Spain, or someone else going for North Africa. That's going to be Vampire Chicken's main threat, or the Orient player. When you have these one border OP bonuses... Italy is rare, but it can be a lot of them. You can never get retaliated into because you're guarded by only your capital. When this occurs, you want to be aggressive early and punish players who are too open. And how do we see that in action? Well, first, after yellow bots out, because you can see they have zero cards right now, we could see the purple players right here, and they were trying to go for Italy. Well, not today, my good sir. So I'm assuming right now that purple is in the West Africa bonus. Vampire chickens going to kick their booty left, right, and sideways. Moving ahead to white's turn right now. They're going, of course, with the Dynaric Alps, which is a really good first turn for them. But they leave a six on capital. Now, six is generally the minimum I like to keep after a round. They want to ensure that nobody else will break them. But here's the thing about Vampire Chicken. He's a maniac! And he decides to smack. Only about an 80% roll, but he got a positive roll. And the white player is doomed, ladies and gentlemen. Vampire Chicken. Now the, does he not only have a very strong capital right here, he now has the incredible mobility of this center cap. And he is unstoppable right now. The orange player is continuing to push for the Orient. If they manage to hold it, they are going to be in a very powerful and dangerous position for Vampire Chicken as they will encroach onto his two capitals. Vampire Chicken should be bad neighbor to them. And here we can see Vampire Chicken doing a really good technique. Constantly click on player profiles. Constantly check out the battle log. You can see if the bot lost their capital. You can see if the yellow player is still offline. And you can see that the way that the bot is attacking right now in a very robotic manner, yellow is staying offline. And look at red. Red's getting 10. So red could be doing two things right now. One, they have like the uh, Iceland and UK bonus. Uh, they may potentially have the France bonus. I Red's playing a good game right now. They have their area of the board. They are pulling ahead. And most importantly, they're staying away from Vampire Chicken. That dude is insane. Seriously, though, he's a top Grandmaster player. If you're not subscribed to this man, make sure to do so after this video. He is a wonderful. I love watching his stuff. 
Now, being a little critical on Vampire Chicken for a second, he when he went for the capital roll, while it was about 80%, it was really almost a 50-50, because even if he had like an even roll with only like a four left on it, the white player could have easily done something like a 10v4, 9v4, even a 9v5, and retaken the capital back, and Vampire Chicken would have lost an entire turn to potentially snowball around the board. While it's cool that he stopped white, white wasn't a threat to them. Uh, orange is the threat right now. I feel like he's making a small mistake at the moment. Like right now, he's just solidifying his capitals. One thing that I would have done uh, right now is I would have placed a, about make this like a four and I would have attacked into the Orient to ensure that the pink player, sorry, the orange player does not have the bonus. Because if Orange is, you can see Orange right now is only getting 6. If they were getting 13 to 14, they could have re-solidified their position. They could have removed Vampire Chicken from this area of the board. Kept their capitals strong. And suddenly you really can't break them. Right now, Vampire Chicken's game is based on taking a lot of risk. But sometimes you, you have to balance that risk with aggression. Leaving this a 10 and this a 4... To attack here just really helps solidify your position. One thing I do like about Vampire Chicken, though, he left the Vienna spot of the board very, very weak with a 2. The bot was clearly going to break. And but while bonuses are great, capitals are even better. The white player definitely learned that. And now we can see Vampire Chicken clicking this on the purple player. Purple is now offline. Red is staying with 10, so either the purple bot's hitting them, the yellow bot's hitting them, but they're still holding their position down. Red is going to be the most dangerous person in this game if they know what they're doing. I also want to commend White. They lost their capital early on, but they are staying in this game right now. They're not giving up. They're trying to do a slow play for Russia. If I'm Vampire Chicken, I don't worry about them at all. So he does what I think he should have done last turn. Well, one, he breaks the purple bot to prevent them from getting strong. Otherwise, they may attack your capital. So just attacking them and cleaning them out is an important behavior. But he's doing a really nice move here, which is aggressively attack the orange player. The orange player did have the Orient. And there's nothing that the orange player can do right now. They are too far away from you. Vampire Chicken, the blue player, is just crushing his opponents right now. And it's just incredible one-border Italy goodness. Absolutely insane what we're seeing right now from him. And Orange is on four cards. Like, Vampire Chicken can just break everything from the Orange player. Force Orange to trade in. And then Vampire Chicken can then eliminate Orange from the game. Everything is going his way right now. He just has to watch the bots, watch the territories, watch red. One thing I might want to consider Vampire Chicken to do is take out this too. Because if red solidifies his position, he can then start putting some troops down here and go after the other strong player on the board, uh, which is Vampire Chicken. When you're strong, just clear out the other strong players, make them focus on their area. Don't make them focus on you. Because Red's getting 17. If Red just solidifies their position and starts placing troops down here, it can be really hard to deal with. They're expanding faster. And we can see that right there. Red is just clearing out Vampire Chicken. Vampire Chicken is no longer focusing on this area. He's only focusing on his own area. So Vampire Chicken still getting 14, and I like his move right now. Well, not 100%. I would have made that a little bit stronger to take out the red too, because again, red sees this. Not, instead, Vampire Chicken sees a 69%, and while that is a nice number, that was not a nice roll. I would have just stuck your troops there and dared the orange player to hit it. It's better... 
or a player to hit your big stack than for you to slam a capital because of the defender's advantage of capitals. They get three defender's dice and you will lose on average 1.7 times the number of troops. Now look. This orange player is rightfully going all into you. Thankfully, they're bad and they just self-destruct all their troops away. Again, these small errors and things like a do uh, add up, depending on the strength of your opponents. If, if red gets 17 troops again, they place everything on the two and then they take the orange player out and leave a big stack right here. Suddenly, you have, you have a huge problem because red's now in your grill and messing with your shit. When you give a good player an opportunity to mess with you, they will do that. Taking them out early is key. And the purple bot now is getting 10. This implies that they have the Spain bonus as Vampire Chicken 2 is alluding here by moving his mouse around in a really cute fashion. He gets so excited when he moves and laughs. Like, his mouse just moves so much. He just gets so excited all the time. <laughs> I love that, man. I think it's like the, this is like the third or fourth Tutor Tuesday video I've done. And it's always a joy watching him play. So Red's getting 18. Does he recognize the potential to get the orange kill? Let's see. It looks like no, he's not. And frankly, I like the move. Because I think the purple bot is encroaching on his territory. He wants to massage the bots, clean them out, and just continue to grow in size and strength. If he placed everything down here, yeah, he would have a capital, but it wouldn't synergize well with him. In the early game, your bonuses and territory matter more. In the late game, your capitals, movement, and ability to take cards matter more. And now Vampire Chicken has a choice. He could try to eliminate the white player, but he lacks a little bit of vision on the board if white is in Germany or not. So I think he makes a very kind of safe play here. And he focuses on eliminating the orange player from the game. And takes the capital. He leaves five down. And now he finally takes out red. So this is really good. I would have fortified at, at, the, at the end of his turn onto the capital in case he had a couple of bad rolls. But he just owns the whole board right now. Like, maybe this bot's going to go in. But red's going to trade in, and then red's nowhere by you. And white's going to trade in, but white is super weak right now. Vampire Chicken's next trade in is going to be key. And what, what are my priorities here if I'm Vampire Chicken? Well, I know red is very strong on this side of the map. If they're, I'm assuming they're competent because they're expanding fast. One, I could just play it safe and I could prioritize trying to take over the North Africa bonus and getting ready to hold off the red player. Two, I could try to take out the yellow player, but this would not trigger a trade-in for me. Three, and I think this is probably the best move, uh, go for eliminating the white player. If you are getting like 20, 25 troops plus the 20 trade in, that's going to be more than what the white player could ever have. I'm assuming with all the attacks on the board that this is all bot territory. All of this is red territory. All of this should be the rest of white. You take out white, get an immediate trade in because white will be on three cards, replenish your troops, and suddenly you're only dealing with bots. The fact that red is coming from this direction implies that white is no longer there. So red may have Germany, but honestly, the fact they're leaving a stack right there means it's not on a capital. And frankly, that just gives like more opportunity for us. This is the key move of the game. They have their advantage. They use the power of Italy. Let's see if they can win with it. And so, they trade in, ladies and gentlemen. And oh no, they're trying to go for the purple kill. Oh no, 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 that is not the right move. They're attacking yellow for no reason. Like, 
that's everything that the blue player had left. Like, now they have to go through. That's a huge mistake. The purple player was getting 9 from before, and they're being super strong. This is uh, not good. They're, they're just panicking. Purple has uh, way too much left. And you can see they just attacked. They could have even taken a capital away. Reds kept their capitals weak. If the red player has a trade in, they may almost even have the ability to come back in this game. And you know what else is crazy? Given that the white player has seen you attack everywhere, the white player has a chance to come back into this game as well. They can take out the yellow player right now, then get the trade in, snag this capital back from you, and then suddenly we have a game, ladies and gentlemen. You're, you're also really lucky the purple players traded in. Otherwise, the red player would have taken them out and then started steamrolling the board, possibly even doing a cap run right now, as it's obvious that the red player has all the remaining capitals on this board. You can see Vampire Chicken, like he's grimacing a little bit, but this man is one of the most optimistic, positive people that I know, like within his videos, always having that engaging laugh. He's always thinking about the next step, Pulling ahead, trying to get the win. He still has opportunity. He still has territory. He still has Italy, ladies and gentlemen. It is not over yet. And it looks like Red is focusing on only hitting the bot. But still, this is White's moment. White needs to go in. They need to take out the yellow player and then take a, a capital and they stabilize themselves here. But instead, White is not going for it. They are just trying to hold their bonus instead. Oh my goodness gracious. This is not the right move. They missed their opportunity. But you guys, Vampire Chicken missed their move before. They are not missing their move again. They need to go in, and there we go. Put the troops down, take on Sevastopol, and let's go. Vampire Chicken is going for the kill. They can fortify some troops back, make it the nine to guarantee it, and the yellow player is eliminated, and that's going to be triggering a trade-in for Vampire Chicken, the blue player, and now he's going to have more than enough troops in order to eliminate the blue player from the game. And we can see with this trade-in, there's more than enough right now. White was a great sport this game. They made a couple of mistakes but they have the spirit of a champion. I can't wait to see what they do. And now, with the 35 trade in, uh, they could try to kill purple. Uh, I would probably prioritize slamming the red player as much as possible. Given that they kept their capitals pretty weak, I think that is worth it. Instead, though, uh, it looks like they are... Vampire Chicken is just trying to... take over, like, the board... And, oh my gosh, what was Red doing this whole time? I'm guessing Purple wasn't hitting them so much with the set on three. And Vampire Chicken, like, he just sees this amazing opportunity. And he is just going to go in. Is, is he going to win with a cap run? Is this legend going to win with a cap run? Holy cow, he is. What an absolutely ridiculous game. Make sure to subscribe to this man again, everybody. It was an honor watching this on Tutor Tuesday. This is Olive XC, signing off.